Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Fader, I'm an evolutionary astrologer and this is the evolutionary astrology forecast for the week between the 18th and the 25th of November 2017. So how are you guys doing? You know, every morning now I wake up at 6 because I have a 7, seven month old daughter, which is amazing. And waking up at 6 isn't always amazing and she wakes up singing. La 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 la. And, you know, I, I, I could hear the, the thoughts in my head like, for God's sakes, how can you wake up at six o'clock singing? And after a few days, you realize that this is how we should all wake up. And you start wondering, when did we stop waking up singing at 6 a.m.? And why? How did that wonderful mechanism disappear from our lives? Um, so I started singing as well. Every time I hear her singing at 6 o'clock, I, I join along. <laughs> One more thing I wanted to show you is this amazing crystal. I had a very good client come over next uh, last week. And um, this is a Lemurian crystal. And it was brought over from Glastonbury. You know, what King Arthur used to wander about. So this is a Lemurian crystal. And look how beautiful it is. Anyway, you see, you see the rainbow colors in it? It's fucking amazing. Yeah, man, far out. This is so powerful. And she left it here by mistake. She forgot it here last week. And since then, I'm like inhaling it. But uh, I, I asked her when she's going to come to take it because the Lemurian crystal misses her. But back to astrology. So we had a pretty intense week with that uh, uh, square between uh, Pluto and Mars. That is very challenging and is all about asserting our personal power, sometimes even becoming more militant about things, and uh, of course, uh, more assertive about our needs and wants, and feeling challenged regarding our wishes and the way we want to uh, take things forward. And it's about evolving, it's about changing. And of course, we have the new moon in Scorpio this weekend. Um, on the 18th, we have the new moon in Scorpio. Every new moon in Scorpio is a turbulent time. It's a time for transformation. It's a time to plunge into your own inner abyss and dive in there and then come up with a light come up with some illumination, uh, illuminating thought or concept, some realization, some understanding of your deeper mechanisms that allows you to free yourself, allows you to free yourself from your limitations, from your boundaries. This is what Scorpio is all about. So yes, this can be a turbulent time emotionally. This can be a dramatic time emotionally. The fact that it Queen Kongs Uranus is about groups it's about my role in the group it's about being authentic to my own true self and the fact that in queen kong sing the new moon it's about actually taking out things that you are doing taking some of the activities and 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 um, roles you are playing in front of other people and for other people away from your life and making some room for the new some purification is needed in order for transformation to take place. So on the 19th we have the Mars square Pluto exact and it's going to dissipate from the 19th onwards. I think you're glad to hear that. On the 21st we have the Sun entering Sagittarius. Happy birthday all you Sagittarians! I love you! Um, so uh, we have... Oh hello Georgia! That was a Georgia wobble. It's like we know there's a cat out there in deep space. We can hear it, we can't see it, but there's a tenth cat in deep space. Um, and the wobble shows us so. That's about the discovery of the tenth planet uh, or the ninth planet. I don't remember, but NASA uh, announced that uh, they now are uh, almost certain that there's another planet in the solar system. Isn't that? exciting isn't that exciting beyond Neptune I'm excited you know that in Judaism and the old scriptures um, in the Old Testament they say that we have ten planets in the solar system isn't that fascinating 
So hopefully we're gonna get there. We we are finding the ninth, and maybe if you consider Pluto, then we already have ten planets. Who knows? But the old ones knew more than we do now, and that's why Isaac Newton spent more of his life translating esoteric text than on his laws of speaker of of physics. And not many people know that, but he actually spent more time uh, translating sacred texts, ancient sacred texts, because he believed that ancient knowledge at the age of Aquarius is coming back. And he did that more than he devoted himself to the laws of physics. But he also believed that by learning esoteric knowledge, he could apply that higher, higher knowledge into other realms like the realm of physics. And I guess that worked for him, didn't it? So back to us so happy birthday all you Sagittarians and on the evening of the 21st that's that's a kind of uh, a sensitive evening it's a moon conjunct Saturn square Chiron so we could have less confidence than we usually do and less optimism uh, than we usually do we could be not so uh, sure of ourselves and we need to be less critical of ourselves and others and just be very sensitive Yes, Georgia, sensitive. Uh, on the 22nd, Neptune, on the 22nd, Neptune starts moving direct after a few months in retrograde movement. And when Neptune moves direct, uh, we can expect nature to behave a little better. We could expect God to behave a little better or more according to what we're used to. Maybe natural disasters and freak weather is going to calm down. And, and basically the public and, and, and the universe is is pacing in, in a more harmonious pace that we're more used to. And also, of course, our artistic and spiritual endeavors work better. The moon is conjunct Pluto on that day, square Mars, especially the evening time, very sensitive time. Don't be too dramatic. Don't be too angry. Don't be total and, and, and uh, obsessive about your ideas. Try and step back from your emotions and look at the strategic uh, aspects of things. Um, this is a time that we could take things out of proportions, so be careful. On the 23rd, we have Mercury conjunct Saturn. I mean, it is exact on the 28th, but we can feel it from the 23rd onwards. And of course, that Mercury conjunct Saturn is going to be trining Uranus, joining that beautiful trine between Uranus and Saturn. and that's going to help us navigate and uh, navigate our life forward and think and process information and communicate in a way that is on the one hand uh, taking us forward considering the innovations that need to be made the changes that have been made but on the other hand keeping it very real very efficient and 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 very useful with Saturn uh, so that's a blessed influence that's a blessed influence and and it's coming on the 23rd we'll feel it more strongly up to the 28th and then it's going to dissipate on the 24th we have Mars opposing Uranus this is going to be exact only December 1st but we're going to feel it from the 21st this is a time that we have a shorter fuse we can get angry with people we could be um, sorry later for throwing the baby with the bathwater or not being patient enough or not being appreciative enough with people being too hasteful with our actions so a little logic and common sense would go a very long way from the 24th onwards on the 25th we have Jupiter trying Neptune this is going to be exact only on the 2nd of December but this is a beautiful influence that we can start feeling on the 25th and very artistic very spiritual um, we just have to be careful not to be too utopistic or too naive but it's a great time for any kind of artistic endeavor talking to the muses it's a great time to um, be more natural be more simple about things be who you are without being hypocritical about it or trying to make it too sophisticated and of course um, being um, honest with your own truth and expanding those horizons. These are good times for all of that and it's a blessed influence. And that's about all I had to say for this week. I want to thank you for listening and remind you that every comment, every share, 
and every like exposes this video to more people and I'm thanking you for it. And of course, for private consultations, we're having an English group in Evolutionary Astrology that is being set up if you want to be part of it and study with me from wherever you are around the world, contact me and I'll give you the details. And that's it. Any questions you might have about astrology, feel free to contact me. Thank you for listening. This is Boaz Feiler. Goodbye.